Hello everybody, welcome back to my shop. My name is Tom. Today I'm going to go over how I built this small welding table that you see behind me. In this space previously was a work table that I had made by slapping a couple of uh, hollow core doors together and laying them across a couple of sawhorses. And while it served a good purpose, it took up a lot of space. And the way that I work is that if there is a large flat open space it eventually is going to be filled with stuff. So I wanted to specialize the area a little bit more. I needed a dedicated spot to weld and so this is the table that I came up with to do that. So there's nothing too special about the construction of this table. I basically used materials that I had on hand. So most of the frame and the little filler piece in the back here are made out of the industrial pallet wood that I like to use. And then the steel portion of this top is a three quarter inch piece of steel that is about 48 inches wide and maybe 15 or 16 inches deep. It is an off cut from a CNC job that a friend of mine gave to me. And when he gave it to me, I knew that that was going to become a tabletop for a welding table someday. The joinery that I used to build this table is a little unique um, and a little unconventional. And if you're interested in seeing a video just about the joinery, I will link it in the cards here, also down in the description. And uh, it'll probably also be linked at the end of the video. So be sure to take a look at that. Now let's take a look at how I built this table. We start this video where we left off in the last video with this double bridle joint that I used to build the frame for the welding table. This is my old setup. A couple of doors stacked on a couple of saw horses. It takes up a lot of space and it's very inefficient. I've also accumulated a lot of stuff underneath it so I gotta clear out the area before I am able to install the new table. So here I am measuring out and marking for a cross brace, a support piece for the tabletop. Since the steel portion of the table does not extend fully from front to back, I will need to use a filler piece, and so to keep those two pieces from sagging, I decided to put in this support in the middle of the table. Here I am, struggling with this 150 pound piece of steel. The sped up video makes it look easy, but it was quite troublesome getting it up to position. And right now you just see me fiddling with the top trying to get it evenly spaced and have the correct overhang all on all sides. And here I am pre-drilling for a lag screw that I'm going to put into this hole. My Sorry that my arm's in the way there. So this lag screw, the head of the screw was actually fits inside this hole and I did that on purpose. I don't intend for that lag screw to hold the table down. The tabletop is heavy enough as it is. So it's just going to act as a locator pin to keep that tabletop in position. So here I have a piece of pallet wood that I'm cutting to make the filler strip behind the steel portion of the table. And I didn't like how thick it was there and how it stepped up and so I planed it down to get it the exact thickness of the tabletop and make a nice smooth transition from front to back. It ought to make it easier for me to lay out things that I'm welding as well. So back at the chop saw I've got another piece of pallet wood here and um, I'm chopping up some small pieces of wood and what I'm gonna do with these is fill in the space between the leg stretchers and make a sort of a shelf there just to maximize the use of the space that I have underneath this table. <laughs> yeah. 
so I'm starting to slide in my equipment here and I don't think I planned this but I was lucky the uh, welder was a perfect fit in there if it was any uh, smaller I wouldn't have been able to fit it in there and I'd probably have to put it on the floor so I'm glad that that worked out and so that shelf is dedicated just for my welding supplies So here is the table, almost done, not completely done yet. There's a couple more things that I wanted to address. First off, this filler piece will burn if uh, I weld on the table for too long. And so to try to m mitigate that burning, I, I decided to char the top. And you'll see me struggle here with my propane torch. It's a little too full and so I tilt it forward too far and start spitting out liquid propane and it's a mess. I ended up finding a better tank that wasn't as full and uh, that ended up doing a much better job. Once I was finished charring the top I just uh, wire brushed off the surface to get the loose material off. And I also used some steel wool to clean up the soot off of the steel top. And I vacuumed everything up and hopefully that'll help reduce the likelihood of flaring up. We'll find out. So then I decided to polish the top with my angle grinder. This is just my, my cheap Harbor Freight angle grinder. And while I was in the middle of doing this job, all of a sudden it just starts acting funny and kind of sputtering and starting and stopping and so I think that this angle grinder has finally kicked the bucket there's its last death rattle right there no big deal I'm probably out like ten dollars on that thing I use it it's kinda of my beater one anyway here's my good angle grinder it's a Milwaukee and as you can see it was performing a lot better and it makes quick work of the polishing of the top here. I also made a point to grind down the tops of those lag screws to make the surface nice and flush. Once again those lag screws aren't holding anything down they're just keeping the table from sliding off of the tabletop from sliding off the, the frame of the table. So here's the finished product. Let me know what you guys think. I had a lot of fun building it. It was especially good because it cost me zero dollars in materials to build it. That's always good. Here comes my summary. Thanks for watching. So there you have it. A nice, heavy, sturdy table with a steel top that I can weld on. It's nice to have a spot that I can locate all of my welding tools and supplies, all of my gear that I have. And I think that this size is the perfect size for my needs because I don't do a lot of large welding projects. Usually when I'm welding, I'm doing something relatively small. And I hope to put this to use right away. I'm building a sawmill attachment for my chainsaw and I'll be sure to document that and share that with you in the future. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, especially if you like this video so you can be notified for more videos. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you feel so inclined. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Um, you guys stay safe out there and I'll see you next time.